Hi, I'm Jovelyn Mirabur. I will discuss the Osobel's Meaningful Verbal Learning Subsumption Theory. The most important factor influencing learning is the quantity, clarity, and organization of the learner's present knowledge. This present knowledge consists of facts, concepts, propositions, theories, and raw perceptual data that learner has available to him or her at any point in time. This comprises his her cognitive structure. Yung sinasabing present knowledge, eh, natural na sa isang estudyante o isang mag-aaral na meron sila noon. Ito ay nag-uumpisa habang sa kanilang paglaki. Nag-uumpisa ito sa kanilang paglaki. Meaningful learning takes place when an idea to be learned is related in some sensible way to ideas that the learner already possesses. Also, Bell believed that before new material can be presented effectively, the student's cognitive structure should be strengthened. When this is done, acquisition and retention of new information is facilitated. Uh, mas maganda kung sa isang, sa isang guro, eh, magbibigay ka na ng panibagong kaalaman at uh, mapapahaba mo pa o mapapalawak mo pa ang kalaman ng iyong isudyante kung ang idea ng isudyante mo ay eh, naandun na sa iyong ituturo. Possible belief that before new material can be presented effectively, the student's cognitive structure should be strengthened. Like I said a while ago, uh, the, the way to strengthen the student's cognitive structure is by using advanced organizers that allow students to already have a bird's eye view or to see the big picture of the topic to be learned even before going to the details. As a teacher, uh, let your students have a preview for the given topic. In that way, they can participate in the discussion. Uh, parang magkakaroon na kagad sila ng idea kung ibibigay mo na kagad yung module sa kanila. Uh, Makakapag-review, preview uh, muna sila bago ka makapagturo. So, uh, habang nagdi-discuss ka sa iyong sudyante, uh, magkakaroon kayo ng... Uh, uh, participation sa isa't isa. Also, Bell's belief, belief of the use of advanced organizers is anchored on the principle of subsumption. He thought that the primary way of learning was subsumption, a process by which new material is related to relevant ideas in the existing cognitive structure. Likewise, Also, Bell pointed out that what is learned is based on what is already known. Uh, sa iyong sudyante, uh, makikita mo kagad kung mabilis silang makakope up sa iyong mga idinidiscuss. Makikita mo sa kanila na natuto kagad sila nung bata pa sila. Habang, nung nasa grade 1 pa lang sila, marami na kagad silang natutunan. Makikita mo yun ha, pag pumasok na siya sa iyo o nakikinig at mabilis silang matuto. This signify, signifies that one's own prior knowledge and biases limit and affect what is learned. Also, retention of new knowledge is greater because it is based on prior concrete concepts. Meaningful learning can take, can take place through four processes. Here are the four processes. Number one, derivative subsumption. Uh, these are the, this is the example of uh, derivative. Now, let's say you see a new kind of bird that has really big body and long, strong legs. It doesn't fly, but it can run fast. In order to accommodate this new information, you have to change or expand your concept of bird to include the possibility of being having long legs. You now include your concept of an ostrich 
to your previous concept of what bird is. So, uh, mapa, pwede mong baguhin o pwede mong paluwakin pa ang iyong kaalaman sa isang, dun nga, sa given example na bird, uh, kung yun nakita mo nga eh, may nakita ka nga na isang bagong uri ng uh, ibon, so, na ang sinasabi eh, dinidescribe nito eh yung malaking, malaking ibon, mabilis, so, mapapaisip ka kagad, uh, ito yung sinasabi nila ostrich, so, kasi, you are familiar on that bird na sinasabi at dinidescribe sa example na ito. You have learned about this new kind of bird through the process of correla, correla, correlative subsumption. In a sense, you might say this is more valuable learning than that of derivative subsumption since it enriches the higher level concept. Imagine that a child was well acquainted with banana, mango, dalandan, guava, etc. But the child did not know until she was taught that these were all examples of fruits. In this case, the child already knew a lot of examples of the concept, did not know the concept itself until it was taught to her. This is super ordinate, ordinate learning. Uh, sa superordinate learning naman, alam ng estudyante, uh, alam niya na fruit, uh, alam niya na banana siya, alam niya kung anong tawag doon, uh, pero hindi nila kayang i-identify kung prutas ba siya, o meat, o di kaya naman vegetable, hanggang sa naituro na ng uh, teacher sa kanila. So, doon pa lang nila malalaman na prutas pala yun. Uh, that is super ordinate learning. This is when newly acquired knowledge combines with prior knowledge to enrich the understanding of, of both concepts. The first three learning process all included new information that relates to hierarchy at a level that is either below or above previously acquired knowledge. So, dito, from the word itself, combinatorial learning. Pinag-combine na yung acquired knowledge dun sa prior knowledge mo. So, mas maganda kung meron tayo netong dalawang to. So, mas mabilis tayo makakaintindi at makaku makakakuha ng idea. If you have this, uh, this uh, knowledge, this true knowledge. Combinatorial learning is different. It describes a process by which the new idea is derived from another idea that is neither higher or lower in the hierarchy, but at the same level, in a different, in a di in a different but related branch. <clears throat> it is a la it is a lot like as learning by analogy. For example, to for example, to teach someone about how plants breathe, you might relate it to previously acquired knowledge of human respiratory where man inhales oxygen and exhales carbon dioxide. The advanced organizer is a major instructional tool proposed by Osobel. The advanced organizer gives you two benefits. Number one, you will find it easier to connect new information with what you already know about the topic. Number two, you can readily see how the concepts in a certain topic are related to it to each other so uh, i have here uh, some example or uh, one example of advanced organizers ah eto na binigay ko na yung mismong gawa ni osbels na uh, osbels subsumption theory so makikita natin kung paano 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 nagsanga at paano pumu paano na uh, nagkaroon na ng uh, ng ano ang possible assumption theory na ando na yung nilalaman niya na ando na yung content ng kanyang pag-aaralan As you go about learning about the topic and go through the four learning process 
The advanced organizer helps you link the new learning to your existing scheme. As such, advanced organizers facilitate learning by helping you organize and strengthen your cognitive structure. So, para pag nakita mo na kagad yung advanced organizer na ibibigay sa inyo, o tati na nasa advanced organizer na siya, para ang bilis mo nang intindihin nun, kasi nakasanga na, uh, meron ka ng uh, concrete idea dun sa, dun sa binigay niyang example. Possible stress that advanced organizers are not the same with overviews and summaries which simply emphasize key ideas presented at the same level of abstraction and generality as the rest of as the rest of the material organizes organizers act as a subsuming subsuming bridge between new learning material and existing related ideas <clears throat> uh, here are the types of advanced organizers number one expository expository describes the new content so uh, expository uh, ito yung uh, naging introduce na ng kung ano ang nilalaman nung kanyang ituturo narrative present the new information in uh, in form of a story to the students. So, uh, eto na yung binibigyan ka na ng information uh, dun, sa, dun sa ituturo niya uh, sa pamamagitan ng pagkukwento sa estudyante. So, para pagbibigay ng ano, ng, para hindi mainip ang yung estudyante. Skimming is done by looping over the new material to gain a basic overview. Graphic organizer. This will to set up or outline the new information. This may include pictographs, descript descriptive patterns, concept patterns, concept maps. So, here are the application of principles. The most general ideas of the subject should be presented first and then progressively differentiated in terms of detail and specificity. He called this progressive differentiation. According to Osabel, the purpose of progressive differentiation is to increase the stability and clarity of anchoring ideas. <clears throat> so, parang kaya ginawa din to ni Osabel, eh parang, parang, parang mapabilis mo yung uh, pag- pagdidikit o pag pagpas, pagsasama ng isang topic dun sa isang topic para hindi ka rin mahirapan uh, para pagsamahin yung 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 topic na ibibigay dun sa sa iyo para hindi maano yung iyong idea hindi hindi maligaw kung saan man dahil nga dito sa progressive differentiation kaya mong pagibahin kaya kaya mong i-identify kung ano siya uh, kung ano ang pinagkaiba niya dun sa isang topic na yun. The basic idea here is that if you're teaching three related topics, topics A, B, and C, rather than teaching all topic A, then B, etc., you would take a spiral approach. That is, in your first pass through, materi through the material, you would teach the big ideas. Example, those highest in the hierarchy, in all three topics, then on successive passes, you would begin to elaborate the details. Instructional material should attempt to integrate new material with previously presented information through comp comparisons and cross-referencing of new and old ideas. So, dito, sa last, I think this is the last, uh, sa comparison, kaya mo nang ikumpara yung, yung mga bago mong natutunan o bago mong ideya sa luma mong idea dahil nga dito sa pag-apply mo o dito sa application of principles ni Osibel's theory. So, yun lamang. Salamat sa iyong pakinig. Sana meron ka naman naintindihan. Yun lamang. Thank you!